The grace and love of our Lord and Savior be with us always. Amen. The word of God we want to consider today is the beginning of our Old Testament reading for this past Sunday, the 21st Sunday after Pentecost. We're looking at Amos chapter 5, verses 6 and 7 and 10 through 12. Amos wrote, Seek the Lord and live or he will sweep through the house of Joseph like a fire. He, it will devour, and Bethel will have no one to quench it. You who turn justice into bitterness and cast righteousness to the ground, you hate the one who reproves in court and despise him who tells the truth. You trample on the poor and force him to give you grain. Therefore, though you have built stone mansions, you will not live in them. Though you have planted lush vineyards, you will not drink their wine. For I know how many are your offenses and how great your sins. You oppress the righteous and take bribes, and you deprive the poor of justice in the courts. My dear friends in Christ, the prophet Amos, he lived in Israel about 750 years before the birth of Christ. And now when we think about Amos, Amos was kind of like the prophet Jonah in a way. Jonah, he was called to go to another nation, to Assyria, to preach to the people there, to preach to Assyria, especially the people of Nineveh. You, you know a little bit about the story of Jonah, the one who was swallowed by the big fish. He went to preach to those people to call them to repentance. Now, Amos, he was someone who lived in the southern kingdom of Judah, but God called him to go to the northern kingdom of Israel to preach to the people there, to preach a message of repentance to them. Now, at the time when he went there, the northern kingdom was enjoying some material prosperity and some political independence. Things were going good outwardly, but they had, they had forsaken the Lord. And they were worshiping the idols of their heathen neighbors. Widespread crime and injustice made life difficult and, and near impossible for people. The rich and the upper classes, the powerful people, what they did is they trampled on the poor and made their life terrible. And, and well, in their unrestrained greed, what they did is they sold into slavery those poor people who owed them money who couldn't pay their bills. Exorbitant taxes were charged on the farmers. In their business transactions, in their business transactions, merchants were guilty of shameless dishonesty. They overcharged customers. They shortchanged them and, and cheated the people left and right. They were upset about having religious festivals because those festivals meant that they couldn't have their businesses open on those days and overcharge their customers. Prostitution was something that was widespread in the land. Things were not good. Amos said to the Israelites, for I know how many are your sin, your offenses, and how great your sins. You oppress the righteous and take bribes, and you deprive the poor of justice in the courts. You turn justice into bitterness and cast righteousness on the ground. You hate the one who reproves in court and despise him who tells the truth. You trample on the poor and force him to give you grain. Oh, we could say that they lived in a me-first society. Oh, similar to the society in which we live today. But what God did is, 
Well, the Lord graciously sent Amos to them to call them to repentance. Amos pointed out their sins to them. He was calling on them to confess this, their sins, that they had sinned not only against the people, but against God himself as well. As we look at Israel's sins listed here, it's easy for us to say they sure were wicked. They surely deserved whatever judgments, whatever punishment God would end up sending against them. And really, that's just exactly how Satan wants us to react when we look at a reading like this. To react by saying, God, I thank you that I'm not like those Israelites. But Paul, the Apostle Paul warns us, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought. The Apostle John says, if we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Like those Israelites, we need to confess our sins. We may have never worshipped an idol like those Israelites did, but the fact of the matter is, is that we're all guilty of idolatry, maybe not to a stone or a wooden idol, but we're guilty of idolatry. And perhaps the main way that we've committed that sin is by our own selfishness, by thinking of ourselves when God wants us to, to think of him, well, to think of our fellow man as well. We're committing idolatry when we love our, our families, our possessions, our hobbies more than we love God. Now the fact of the matter is, is that we are sinners. We aren't better than the Israelites or anyone else for that matter. And if we think we're better than others, if we think we're better than the Israelites or, or anybody else, then what we're guilty of is the sinful judging that Jesus was condemning when he said, judge not lest ye be judged. So let's confess our sins. John says, if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and, and purify us from all unrighteousness. When Amos went to the Israelites, there probably were some Israelites who did repent when he called on them to repent. There probably were Israelites who confessed their sins. But on the whole, what happened with the Israelites is they, they rejected Amos' preaching. So God did send his judgment. And not many years after that, the Assyrian army came in and wiped out the northern tribes of Israel. Her cities were leveled, and all but a few of her people were exiled. And, well, the northern kingdom kind of thought of as the lost tribes of Israel because of that. But the fact is, is that it wouldn't have had to have been that way. They could have repented. They could have confessed their sins like the Ninevites did. Remember I mentioned Jonah before? Jonah was sent to preach to the Ninevites. He avoided that at first, was swallowed by the big fish. But when he preached to the people, when he said 40 days and Nineveh will be destroyed, well, the people repented. They confessed their sins and God was gracious and merciful to them. He withheld his judgment from them. Oh, how important it is that we well, don't follow the example of the Israelites here, but that we follow the example of the Ninevites. Let's humbly confess our sins and let's rejoice in God's forgiveness. Amen. Let's pray. Lord God, our Heavenly Father, we know there is a lot of wickedness and sin in our world, and we also know that all we have to do to see that wickedness and sin 
is to look in the mirror of your law and look at ourselves. Lead us always to confess our sins and to rejoice in the forgiveness we have because Jesus lived, died, and rose from the dead for us to pay for our sins and to win for us heaven. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you always.